drugs in, guns in, drugs in, plants closed, jobs leaving. That is a very, very toxic combination. Do you want to see President Obama take more of a, of, a, of a central role, come to Chicago, hold town halls? I mean, you have been talking about the crime and drug problem in Chicago for a very long time. I'm glad that he, he used the occasion of the uh, of the Sandy Hook crisis to deal with the, with the guns issue. Because that was that that killing in, in uh, Sandy Hook was in the only way different. These 20 babies who never had the chance to open their Christmas presents. They never could see the Easter rabbit. I mean, something about that that it was a tipping point, and yet it illuminates Chicago, 175 children killed under age 18. Uh, and so, but, but 32,000 killed nationally. So the killing epidemic is, is huge. I wish it would come to Chicago, because unlike a kind of antiseptic, uh, the, the new... Uh, uh, the, the, right, the new uh, Reverend Doctor, Jessica. we see the Chief Justice of the United States, John Roberts, arriving here on Capitol Hill behind us right now. He will be administering the oath of office to the President uh, for a fourth time. Yesterday was the third, twice four years ago, fourth and last time, we should point out. Man, uh, this will be a significant historic moment. But look here, we are 160 miles from Jamestown, Virginia, where the slave ships landed. We're on the steps where sla the enslaved people built the steps of this capital. He looks over where Lincoln, the emancipator, uh, is, is, is more immortalized than what about the King's statue is. So that's, we just surround a huge bit of, of history here today. And look at that, uh, Sonia Sotomayor, the justice, arriving well, as well. Uh, she'll justice be, Fryer uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, she'll be administering the uh, oath of office but, uh, for the vice but that, president. That, that, was, that was the Supreme Court, Supreme Court in 1963. Matter of fact, in the South, blacks can vote, white women can serve on juries, 18 year olds can vote, students can vote on campuses, you can vote bilingually. So since 63 to the day, in many ways the whole world has changed. We've come a long way, we still have a ways to go, as you will be the first to acknowledge. Reverend Jackson, thanks very much for coming great for coming up here, spending a few moments with us. Thank you, sir. Great thank you. Thank you, thank you. Reverend. Former President George W. Bush and his father, the former President George H. W. Bush, aren't attending this inaugural. But President, uh, the former President Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter are. We're waiting to see President Clinton stand by for that. Also, we're taking a closer look at the downside of winning another four years in the White House. It doesn't always go so well. The second term curse, as some call it, that's coming up as well. First, though, an inaugural flashback. that no two customers are the same. We understand that unique situations require unique products and ideas. And we take the time to personally serve our clients in ways that other agents won't or can't. Knowledge, commitment, expertise in business and personal insurance. If you're looking for a true partner, you'll find one at R.J. Kerrigan. Contact us today for an evaluation of your needs. R.J. Kerrigan Insurance Agency. Simple solutions. This is more than a paycheck. We know the serving, teaching, driving, and writing it's to earn it. That's why TurboTax helps you keep more of your money. Ronald Reagan gave the first inaugural address from the west front of the Capitol, and in doing so, issued a manifesto of the era's conservative tide. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. The most recent inaugural address was, of course, that of given by Barack Obama. This is the price and the promise of citizenship. This is the source of our confidence, the knowledge that God calls on us to shape an uncertain destiny. This is the meaning of our liberty and our creed, why men and women and children of every race and every faith can join in celebration across this magnificent mall and why a man whose father less than 60 years ago might not have been served in a local restaurant can now stand before you to take a most sacred oath. Wow, at its best, that inaugural address does for a presidency what a lead sentence does for a book. It captures the purpose and the direction of that of what's to come. A great presidency often begins with a great statement, and the day they make that statement is within moments of taking the oath itself. John Meacham is the author of Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power, which is way up there on the New York Times bestseller list, and he joins right now. John, it's so important. I'm here with Rachel, and I just think it's such a great question. Is this president, a revolutionary president, in fact, the way that Jackson was, 
in the 1820s the way that your guy Jefferson was in the beginning of the 19th century and the way Reagan was even. Is he going to transform in this second term this country? Well, that's the great question. Biographically, uh, demographically, Barack Obama will be written about and debated, as Churchill once said in another context, as long as the English language is spoken in any corner of the globe. Only on CNN. Aaron Burnett, Anderson Cooper, and Piers Morgan take you to the biggest and most celebrations in Washington. Live coverage tonight, 7 Eastern on CNN. Black smoke. Rage and fire, blood and water's rising higher and higher. When your world is turned upside down by the unthinkable, you need somebody you can trust, like me. Thousands have turned to professional fire restoration to turn crisis into calm. Businesses, schools, and homes just like yours. When calamity occupies your world, call professional fire restoration. Professional fire restoration. At R.J. Kerrigan Insurance Agency, we know that no two customers are the same. Our business is very complicated. Our insurance needs are complicated. R.J. Kerrigan has made it very simple. We work very closely with them, and they work very closely with us to understand our business, to understand our needs, and their, their service is second to none. It's a partnership. It's a true partnership. R.J. Kerrigan has definitely helped us grow. R.J. Kerrigan Insurance Agency. Simple solutions. This is CNN. Hundreds of thousands of people are now gathered here on the National Mall, getting ready for the inauguration of the President of the United States. The public swearing in ceremony will be taking place very, very soon, and the excitement is building only moments ago. The former president, Bill Clinton, he, he arrived here up on Capitol Hill. There you see the video of the former president. He's walking in among the so many VIPs who have come to celebrate this moment in American history. Democrats, Republicans, people from all over the country, they are now here. It's taken months to build a special platform where the president, his family, and a who's who of VIPs will stand and sit for the inauguration. John Berman has a closer look at who gets to be on this presidential podium. John, give us the answers. Hey, well, you know, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, they just took their seats and were just minutes away from more big names coming in. And when they get to their chairs, well, they'll find a blanket waiting for them and also a name card. And the name cards here, a collection of the biggest names in Washington. We took a picture to show you how the whole thing is laid out. Take a look at this. Nothing gets you closer than genetics. Front and center, family. The president's family. Michelle Obama, daughter Sasha Malia, and other close family members. Next to them, the Biden family, children and grandchildren. The other folks in the front row, members of the Supreme Court, including the president to join the military and, and serve for a bigger purpose than yourself. Our brave heroes are returning home from war, and for many, their lives will never be the same. I was hit with an IED. It blew up right outside of my, my door. Something hit me, never heard it coming, and uh, it just knocked me off my feet. I lost my right arm, my fingers on my left hand, and pretty much the rest is just burns all over. I didn't sustain any physical injuries. I suffer from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It changes my personality. The person who went to Iraq is it, by far not the same person that came back. From that illness that he's been suffering, and George W. Bush and Laura sent their regrets as well, said their thoughts are with the Obamas. They are surrounded by military power, the Joint Chiefs, Chiefs, they just took their seat. And behind the court, you have House leadership, other House members, then over here, Senate leadership and the full Senate. The members of Congress are all smiles today, but, but with the battles ahead, those smiles, I suppose, could be changing soon. The nosebleed seats, nosebleeds go to the governor's way out and back, and over here on the other side, the diplomatic corps. They're in the power of bleachers, if you will, but you know, on a day like day, today, there really are no bad seats. A short while ago, we saw John Brennan, the nominee for the CIA chief. We saw him walk in and take his seat. To let them know that they can come here and have fun the war project, help them out. For many of those returning home from war, 
the greatest casualty is being forgotten. You can honor and empower these heroes by calling Wounded Warrior Project right now. Fox News Alert, we mentioned this right before the break. We have reports now of two more Americans confirmed dead after that terrorist raid on the gas plant in eastern Algeria, which brings the total now to three Americans inside. We have the identity of one. He's Frederick Butaccio from the state of Texas. We do not have the identities confirmed yet on the other two. We spoke with Connor Powell last hour. It was clear that it is not uh, yet determined uh, how many people inside that facility have been killed in total and also what their nationalities are. There's one report suggesting a Canadian national uh, aided or assisted or may have even helped direct the terrorists inside that gas plant. Community. We want you to take a picture of yourself watching the inauguration, watching the swearing in uh, on Capitol Hill today. We want you to upload it to Instagram because this is about you sharing your view of history with us. Go to Instagram. Here's the key. You need to hashtag CNN. Make sure you include a caption. Why is this important for you to be watching this historic occasion here on this Monday in Washington? We've already gotten a couple of photos. Let me share just a few with you. You might recognize this first guy, country music legend Willie Nelson, actually watching our coverage last night of the red, white, and blue ball honoring our nation's men and women in uniform. Right now, a short time ago, uh, and as you know, the president, the first lady, the vice president, and his wife, Dr. Jill Biden, uh, went in for a prayer service that lasted almost an hour. This is a tradition going back uh, to FDR, where either a new president or a newly reelected president will go in uh, and just have a chance for some uh, spiritual guidance, perhaps uh, pause, reflect on the last four years. But now, think about uh, the four years ahead. A lot of big challenges. The president will be. Uh, talking about that in his inaugural address. Interesting that the pastor at St. John's uh, was talking about how in recent days he thinks uh, President Obama has almost been a, a pastor-in-chief, someone who uh, in Newtown, Connecticut, had to go in uh, and try and heal the community there. Uh, now, obviously, a much bigger challenge, which is uh, healing a country that has been through this financial crisis, uh, a country that uh, after a very hardly uh, fought uh, and, and, and tight election uh, it is... Uh, uh, looking to see what the president will do in the days ahead to bring them together on, on not just fixing the economy, immigration reform, now gun control, as I mentioned, after Newtown uh, on the agenda. I saw the president's chief speechwriter, John Favreau, uh, outside the church, uh, and he was carrying a manila folder that had the inaugural address, and he gave me a little thumbs up as if they're feeling good about it. They say there's two big themes. The president will talk about coming together, as I mentioned, but also talking about a call to action, uh, getting the American people engaged in the political process, not just in the campaign, but now after the campaign, uh, in the four years ahead, the motorcade uh, below the riser where we are, Mar Martha, as you can tell, is, is starting to gather because in the next few moments, the president the first lady will be uh, joining up with the vice president, his wife, and the congressional leaders and starting that motorcade uh, over to the Capitol to get ready for the swearing in. Yeah. It is a very big morning, and Ed, you hit on so many of the important themes that we expect to hear a lot more about in the second term from President Obama, and the tone of this speech is something that is much discussed. You know, whether or not he will be somewhat confrontational in terms of saying what he'll stick to his guns on and he will not uh, concede on, gun control comes to mind under that issue, or whether or not he will strike the kind of tone, as I mentioned before, that he struck in the Democratic Convention that put him on the political map in terms of a national sense. You know, what kind of America are we? Just a thought on that, Ed. Well, Martha, you're absolutely right. I mean, because look, uh, all presidents, uh, when they come up to an inaugural address, obviously the broad theme is going to be about coming together. It's not going to be about division. But in recent days, what will be more important will be the actions the president has after the inaugural address, as you note, on guns. And at that news conference last week, it had a kind of a defiant tone. We'll see after the inaugural address what tone... Crowds. This is 2009, the Obama first inaugural... Here's a normal day in 2011. You see the big difference right here. Uh, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich is arriving up at the Capitol, I'm told, as we continue to go through this. You see this play out. One more thing I want to show you as you come back in here. We can also look later over at the White House, where the President lives, of course. And what's the difference? Here's the President's reviewing stand. You see this little white structure here? There's also the VIP reviewing stand, some media reviewing over here across in the White House. That's not there on a normal day when you take... Good morning, I, I find that number 
83% absolutely stunning, and it is a message not just to lawmakers on the Hill, but also to the President and the White House behind us, that that attention has only increased as Americans see that that debt number top $16.4 trillion. They care about it. They care about it a lot. I mean, you had a Washington Post editorial the other, the other day talking about how President Obama needs to get entitlement spending under control. And if he doesn't, uh, those programs are going to be in major trouble in the coming years. I mean, it's just, it's just a statement of fact. It's not, that's not a matter for opinion. Uh, and yet, you know, there, there's been very little leadership on that issue in Washington. Uh, you know, the, some have taken a shot at it. Paul Ryan took a shot at it. Uh, to his political peril, it was used against him when he was running for the White House. But, you know, these politicians, they don't really have the spine for taking a shot at these very, very controversial so-called third rail issues. And yet you can see the American people clearly want them to, Bill. Yeah. Uh, I think the other number that I find striking today, four years ago, unemployment in the U.S. was 7.8 percent. And four years later, on this very day, it is also 7.8 percent as we see the first family now leave the White House and again make the procession up the Capitol Hill. Yet I'm not quite sure how much that will be addressed. Um, in terms of specifics in the inaugural speech today, it, it may be brushed with more perhaps a thematic theme than it will be specific. Yeah, you can't imagine he's going to talk about the, the unemployment rate, uh, which, you know, obviously... Yeah, it's congressional... Speaker Boehner and uh, Congressman Eric Cantor, I confirmed that uh, with each of their offices, a nice bipartisan tradition and a good way to kick off a uh, new term. And as we've been discussing, the president doesn't do enough outreach, doesn't do enough socializing with leaders. Well, here he is doing... It's the Republicans that you have to make these investments if you're going to move the country forward. We have two different philosophies on how to create jobs in this country. Republicans think the government doesn't have a role. President Obama and the Democrats and the progressive community believe that you have to be a partner. There has to be that public partner private chip agreement if we're going to move forward. Senator John Kerry is going to play obviously a big role in this next administration. Nominee for Secretary of State and you see the Marines here making way for the President himself. Uh, this is actually the President leaving the White House. You saw just a moment ago his daughter Malia and her grandmother uh, leaving ahead of the President himself. But there's going to be moments like this, these moments of transition throughout the day. It moved the current President greets the new president, and one of the traditions is he leaves a note. So that doesn't happen this time. The President Obama doesn't need to leave himself a note about the second term. And an outgoing vice president, there's a great old desk in the vice... 65 and a half percent. Uh, that is down two percent, uh, about 63 and a half percent now since the president took office. And you can clearly see that jobs in America is still job number one. But again, thematically, hope and optimism that America could be um, that great place that so many people believe it can be yet again. Mm -hmm. uh, I will imagine in the 18 to 20 minute address we'll hear a bit about that too. I mean, I think that's true for many reasons. A, you know, that he's got, he sort of cornered the market on hope. That was, of course, his, his slogan going into office the first time around. It's, you know, perhaps less impactful second time around when he has a four-year record as president. Uh, during what's been a divisive presidency for reasons attributable not only to him but to his colleagues over on the Hill who have given him a hard time in a lot of his legislation. Um, but the presidents who have been remembered most fondly, Bill, they say, are presidents who have managed to keep that optimistic tone, especially in their second term, notwithstanding the partisan divide, including, you know, Ronald Reagan comes to mind. He, he was able, JFK uh, is another person who, who's credited with notwithstanding divided government being able to keep the country's spirits up. And when you've got 7 plus percent unemployment, when you've got, I mean, the, the growth for next year is expected to be at 2.1 percent. I mean, that's not, that's not great. Uh, and you've got 23 million Americans, I think it's about 21 now, uh, either unemployed or underemployed. And we're not hearing that jobs is the number one item agenda. We're hearing, uh, on the agenda, we're hearing it's guns and, and uh, immigration. Uh, people do need to have their spirits lift, lifted, you know? Huge challenges. We'll go through it together. Thank you, Megan. Megan Kelly. Absolutely, Bill. With the same. All right. Uh, hey, we, <laughs> we shall. You it's do the better same than it was four years you. ago, right? It was uh, in the it, teens it, with it, the wind chill then. Hey, downright balmy. We'll see you with <laughs> Brett, okay? Coming up, coming up in a matter of moments here on the Fox News Channel. Uh, their coverage kicks off right around 11 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you, Megan.